Hello, I'm Tom Kramer, and today uh, we're doing a session to talk about analytics and AI, and specifically, uh, we're focused on 5G and edge computing, but I will assure you that you do not have to understand 5G and edge computing for this session. So, I'll cover four basic areas and then do a review. Um, of course, 5G and Edge first, just to give you just a very high level view of that. Um, talk about something that I think is extremely important to, to understand the overall view of what's actually happening, which will help you understand context, uh, which is a business process and inflection points. And then um, and it'll be very simple and I'll give some examples. And then we'll talk about <clears throat> business need and, and what that really is about is, you know, when you're working with uh, a customer an enterprise or anything of that nature in industry, um, you know, understanding how to, under, how, to, how to hear about business need. And then we'll, of course, talk about how data science may help uh, in this type of activity and, and does help. And then uh, do, of course, this quick review. Now, um, 5G, what is 5G? Um, I'm, I've worked in the industry for a lot of years, so I've worked in it even before 1G. So <laughs> um, the Gs are stand for generation <clears throat> and, and generations of what you would ask. These are a set of specifications that are developed by the telecommunications industry around mobility. So when someone says 5G, we're really talking about the fifth generation. And when they say 4G, of course, we're talking about the fourth generation. So it's, it's very simple. Um, it's kind of cool because I, I hear a lot of people that uh, throw out, you know, these terms and, and have no idea what they mean. So in, in 5G, um, <clears throat> I'm sure you've seen all the commercials, so I don't have to tell you. It's, it's fast. It's new. It's way cool. Um, and, and a lot of the things that you see on TV, we're talking about. Uh, something we would call consumer 5G, meaning people like you and I and ourself and our mobile phones or mobile devices, tablets, et cetera, using 5G. But uh, more importantly, the, the the real, let's say the real value or the, the, the target of 5G is to take mobility beyond where it's at today, right? So this, this is in several different areas. So they have these four broad use cases. And at the bottom, I put a link into the Thales Group and it's a French, uh, a company that does French government uh, activities and it's, pretty, it's a pretty good write-up. So if you wanna look at that link and, and go through there, it's got all kinds of great information on 5G and written in English. So it's, uh, I mean, clear English. Um, I don't mean versus French, I'm just clear English. And I uh, help you understand a lot more about 5G. <clears throat> but uh, I thought these four uh, use cases are helpful because it kind of shows you the target of what's going on. So fixed wireless access, that's already started, uh, started a few years ago. Um, what this is, is the ability to use the 5G tower, you know, the mobile tower that you see when you're driving around or, or actually looking for, you know, connectivity. Um, it's a direct link between that tower wirelessly to a connection point. So, and yes, well, well what is that? Well, the first 5G uh, fixed wireless trials were really, really around home, uh, home mobility, right? So connecting to homes. Um, if you could imagine a, a, a dish network dish on the end, um, uh, that that's a great example, right? Um, while it's not satellite based, it would go from the tower to a, a, a receiver or an antenna that's on the outside of your house. And then inside the house, of course, you, you would use Wi-Fi to connect to the Internet. So it'd be a direct connection, much like a fiber optic connection to your house. OK, <clears throat> now um, the next thing that they're, they're looking at is this notion of enhanced uh, broadband. Now, this is the thing that's driving all the commercials, right? So they're saying, hey, you know, get this new 5G iPhone or Samsung phone or whatever. And, you know, you're going to get this really, really fast connection. And they show you people in cities and you've seen commercials, right? So that, that's, that's what they're working on next. Um, after that, and which is next year, <clears throat> they're, they're doing a focus on massive M to M and IoT and, and, and you know, Put that in there so you understand machine to machine is 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 the notion of the protocols or the messaging that's passed back and forth between machines to talk and exchange data 
Um, IoT, the Internet of Things, is the concept of many, many, many devices that are out there doing many different functions, right? So you hear the term billions, and eventually I think we'll say trillions, but right now we're saying billions uh, of devices that are out there. So the focus of 5G is to start to enable this, right? And then in about three, four years, <clears throat> Um, you'll see that really focus on ultra low, low latency um, support for these devices. Now, the reason I'm I'm going to we're going to step into some some discussions here. Just remember these points because these are what are actually happening. So I'll try to point these out as we're going along. Now, <clears throat> um, I had uh, so let's talk about Edge. <clears throat> so I've been working on Edge since late 2017 and. I'm sure as soon as you hear Edge or Edge Computing, you already know what I'm talking about, and 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 you probably do. I don't know if you do or don't. Um, everyone already has a uh, say uh, an opinion of of what that that means. But this little thing I wrote in uh, LinkedIn is is probably really helpful because you should have a broad interpretation. My view, my personal view, you should have broad broad interpretation of Edge. And I'll talk about that a little bit. But you know what I want to say is. Back in 2017, <clears throat> excuse me, the edge was a place, right? We we're looking for some place called the edge. In reality, what we found out is that the edge is really the intersection between compute, right? Some computing algorithm and relevant data. So you have this sort of cross point where the two come together and are really close together. And so in some respects, it's moving compute closer to data versus moving data closer to compute. Nothing hard about that concept, but you should just keep that in mind as we go forward. Now, <clears throat> this notion of an inflection point, um, I think it's really important because I want to start with this and I want you to sort of think about what I'm saying. This inflection point is, is, is a point in a business process and I'll kind of show you some representations of what that sort of means. Um, but everything before this point uh, is, is sort of positive and everything after this point is negative, meaning it, it, it either detracts or costs you more or something, right? And so let me show you the representation. <clears throat> so the first thing I'll, I'll say is we'll look at two vectors, right? Time and cost. And, and we'll use those to help, help understand. Um, I'm gonna show you a third vector and there's probably 18 more, but uh, this one, a lot of my colleagues always say, hey, Tom, you got to point this one out because this is the big one, um, which is your dissatisfaction with what's going on. Now, I'm not going to show this anymore, but you should understand that, of course, if things go negative uh, and something that you're really happy about, um, you're going to be dissatisfied. And, and you'll, you'll see what we're talking about here in a second. Um, and then this notion of a business process, I'm going to give a little bit of context to this. It's going to be very simple, um, and, and the reason I warn you about that is because I want you to be able to visualize what's going on. <clears throat> so I had to select something that everybody does day in and day out, and hopefully that'll be helpful to you and, to under and, and how you understand this. <clears throat> now, what you just saw pop in was something I'll call the inflection point. This point in the process, and it could be anywhere in this process, I, of course, you want to put it right at the, you know, the zero point of the uh, X and Y axis. But the point is, is everything after this to the right is, is where you're going to, let's say, experience dissatisfaction, more costs, more time, more things like that. Everything to the left will decrease that, right? Will make dissatisfaction better or satisfaction higher. Uh, we'll reduce costs <clears throat> and we'll reduce time. So those that's that's the it's as simple as it gets. <clears throat> now, um, what did I pick? <clears throat> I picked package delivery. And uh, interestingly enough, you know, uh, I actually did this just before COVID hit, and I realized that while I used it as a sort of thought model for how I would put things together. Uh, in, in this flow, because you know, I have to explain things to a lot of people in my job. <clears throat> um, how many people, I mean, <laughs> everything comes through delivery today. So you actually, 
experience this all the time, right? You take packages, they get picked up, they get delivered, right? So concept's very simple. Um, time and cost vectors, we just talked about that. <clears throat> this notion of a, uh, a business process <clears throat> for package delivery, um, I'll show you how simple it is. You, 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 you take the package or you schedule the package to be picked up, right? And of course, it's going to go to someone else or someplace else. So you have the package uh, picked up or, or delivered for delivery. Um, at the inflection point, <clears throat> the package is delivered. So at this point, the package is actually left on a doorstep or handed to a person or handed to a neighbor to hand to a person. But the package is essentially delivered. For, for the most part, this process is over. But as you probably well know or experienced, <clears throat> Sometimes something happens or has happened, right? So you go out on the porch, you pick up the package, you bring it inside, it looks a little crunched or maybe a side's got a poked hole in it, right? Uh, and you open the package up and it's damaged, right? So I'm sure everyone's experienced that, right? And, and what a headache that is, especially if the thing you <laughs> inside really cannot be damaged, or if it's damaged, you don't want it, you want it replaced, right? So <clears throat> what, what, you know, what can the shipping company do other than quickly try to resolve the client's problem, right? So it's either the shipping company or the shipper, you know, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's someone that's responsible for resolving the problem. If you look to the left, what I'm, what I'm pointing out there is everything to the right is around trying to address the problem. Everything to the left actually becomes an opportunity for edge computing. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that, but I want you to, I'm going to show you two concepts, but um, um, but but I do want you to know that everything to the left is an opportunity for edge computing. <clears throat> okay, so let's 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 relook at what I just explained, and let's look at it from the viewpoint of shifting uh, a shift right, meaning looking to the right in the process, right? So you still see the package is out for delivery. You see, still see it gets delivered. You see that it's damaged. Right. And what I'm going to show is that now that the package is identified as damaged, um, there's a new process that kicks in. I'll call it package reconciliation, right? Just for lack of a better term. <clears throat> and what's happening in this process is, you know, it's reactive, right? The, the sport teams, re, you know, you either call them or they're calling you and they're, they're trying to figure out what, you know, what, what do we need to do? They need to identify the problem that occurred. Uh, and then they need to figure out how to resolve this problem and possibly even start a claims process, right? For insurance or whatever. It, it depends on the situation. But the point is, is this is all happening uh, after the package has shown up. And um, there's an increase, of course, as you can see now in cost and time. And as you know, uh, going back to the satisfaction, dissatisfaction, let's call it, um, anyone that's experienced this is went from really happy that you got the package to kind of upset that you're going through this, this thing, right? That you're experiencing. But eventually the second package gets delivered. So a lot of the feeling is, is, Hey, you know, Tom should be happy. He got, he got the thing finally, you know, it only took three weeks, but he got it. Right. So let's, let's look at another concept. Let's call it ship left. All right. So now we're going to look to the left of the process and one of the things that's important when you shift left is to look at the process itself. Now, the package that you've given for delivery goes to a local collection facility. And I'm making this very simple. This, you know, if it's cross country, there's a lot of things happening. Um, eventually it goes to a transfer facility, right? To move it. And then it goes to a distribution dis facility on the delivery side where the person's going to get the package and then they put it out for delivery, right? Goes, gets delivered. So very straightforward, but in this left shift, you actually are doing very similar things that you did on, that we were doing on the right shift, right? 
And so you're, you're identifying problems, you're rectifying those situations that are occurring, um, you're putting proactive support in place, and you're starting a claims process. Now, one of the things I'll just point out here is, is, you know, we're just talking about the damage of a package. But you notice we're talking about facilities and, you know, people and vehicles. There's a lot of stuff that can happen on the left, right? I mean, keeping track of what's happening with the workers around worker safety, making sure the facility and all of its capabilities are, you know, within specification, whether it's temperature or whatever whatever may uh, whatever may be there. Um, there's a lot of things that can happen on the left that could be in the, in the category of identification of problems, but we're only gonna focus on damage packages for the moment. Now, let's shift to this notion of, of business need. Um, so you understand that there's this business process happening. You understand that there's things going on in that process that are causing extra, you know, time and cost. And you understand there's a, there's an ability or at least a, a thought that you can probably get in front of that and, and, and reconcile some things quicker. <clears throat> All right. So the business says, when you talk to the business, they say, Hey, we, we're experiencing these higher costs. You know, we think it's, it's mostly around the delivery of the packages, uh, damage, you know, they're, they're giving you some of the things that they believe is going on. Then you go through this business process analysis, right? So you understand the, the, the business's need, right? They've got this concern that they're, they're, they would like someone to address or help them address. Um, you go through so this analysis, right, which we just showed with the package, like looking at the transfer facilities, et cetera, all these points. So you say, hey, what are all the different points and, you know, what could we look at and what should we pay attention to? Um, and then next, the question becomes, okay, so you've looked at all this stuff. The question becomes, and, and, and some of you are students and some of you are in the industry, in various industries, um, can data science do anything to help? Right at this point, you were just wondering, you know, what could actually help? And one of the things in understanding the need and understanding the business process, the, you know, the data engineers can go through and start looking, and I'm going to show examples of this, by the way, or, or talk with an example of this. Um, you know, they look in the data lake or some other data collection, so, you know, sources of data that's been collected, and they see a lot of stuff, right? They see sensors, these IoT sensors that I talked about earlier, right? They're, they're measuring temperature, humidity, other stuff. Okay, great. Um, but in this specific example, just to make it simple, um, there happens to be data cameras, video cameras, right? That are, that are looking at the packages on the conveyor belts. It's probably there, you know, when you ask the, the supervisor, oh yeah, we put those things in for security. There's, you know, some people were stealing packages. Now we can see them. Someone grabs a package off the belt, you know, we, we got at least got it captured on the video. So it's like, hey, okay, I already have video now that shows me all the packages. <clears throat> then the data scientists get involved and they say, hey, you know, they ask them, can you, can you do anything with this video? And I said, well, maybe we can start to train some models to identify damaged packages, right? So they start to do some sort of model building. So these are just very, very simple examples of, of what's actually happening. Now I'm gonna give a few graphical examples um, that hopefully will help you understand kind of the overall view as it relates to a distribution company like the, the one we've just been talking about. So, uh, uh, so, you know, this is a company that spans the whole United States, right? So those little clouds are little distribution centers. And so there's 200 distribution centers, you know, D1 through D200, right? And uh, they're spread all over the country. And um, over on the right, what you see is that this, this particular, you know, uh, company has a uh, data lake that they, they collect all kinds of information from all over the company, but specifically we're, we're looking at data that's coming from distribution centers. Remember the, uh, the temperature, humidity sensor data, the, the video that's coming from the packages for security. And the data science team that we that I just talked about, whether it's the data engineers or the, the data scientists themselves, um, get involved in looking in that data lake. That's actually where they were looking for the data that I described, right? And then, of course, the data scientists uh, now do that work that I talked about where they start to train models to see if they can identify damage packages. And of course, they go through an iter iteration 
of not only training, but evaluating these models and, and go through a continuous kind of loop until they get a model that can fairly accurately identify damaged packages. Now, at this point you say, well, hey, that's kind of cool. But the, the, the challenge is, is they're looking in this data lake and they're looking in the data lake at video from the 200 distribution facilities and they definitely can de recognize damaged packages. The only challenge is, is those packages went through that conveyor belt an hour ago, a day ago, a week ago, it wasn't recently. So if you saw the damaged package way too late to do something about it, right? So one of the concepts I'm gonna leave you with is, you know, intersection of compute with relevant data right here in the data lake. That's where it's happening. This, this is an example of an edge. You say, well, it's not really, it doesn't look like an edge to me, Tom, but it's an example because that is where the relevant data is at this moment. So all of the information flowing in the centers is going to data lake. The data scientists are looking, scientists are looking at data lake, they're building this model, right? That is relevant today. Now they've got a model that works, right? So when they get a model that works, <clears throat> they say, hey, we got to have a way to move this model out closer to the conveyor belts. And by the way, there's like 200 places to stick this model or more, right? And so we've got to move that model out and we're going to use a container in this particular example and it's the method that we are using today to move that compute closer to the data now what i show there is that's the model that was built and you know trained by the data science team the plus means that also in the container with the model is an inferencing engine so that it can be you know can execute uh when it when it arrives where it's going to uh going to actually uh, execute, right? So out in the data, out in the distribution facilities. Um, now you see out there in uh, Southern Idaho, um, we're going to go do a little test and see, does this, does this thing work? Can we actually see packages? And the answer is, yeah, it seems to work. Then we do a trial out in the Western region, right? And then we turn around and we do a trial all over the country, right? So now 200 distribution centers are up and running. Um, these models are there. They're identifying packages that are damaged, right? So everybody feels good about that. Um, and now the edge has moved from the data lake to the distribution centers. And the edge has moved from one large spot to 200 distributed spots, right? So now we've got models that are very accurate that we built, right? Because we're really good data scientists. And it's, it, it, they're, you know, they're out of the 200 distribution facilities. So as far as we're concerned, working great. Um, but the question is, is, hey, Tom, how do you know that your model is working great? And my answer is, is well, because I trained it real well. But as you know, that's not really a good answer. So there's been a lot of work to capture and pass back model performance information, accuracy information, bias information, and the ability to manage the, the models in a life cycle. And the reason I tell you this is because this is the important part of the overall data science piece. I know a lot of, especially if you're a student, you're, you're learning how to build the model. But if you're in industry, you want something that has a complete life cycle so that you can keep updating the model. So the models can be updated when you know that the accuracy is degrading, right? And a lot of times models degradate when you get other sources of data that are involved. So you can now go back and, 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 and you know, update the training of the models and then redistribute new models out to the distribution facilities. So this whole concept that I've just gone through very quickly, by the way, um, so hopefully you, you, you got it. I mean, I'm, I, I oversimplified a lot of things. Um, you know, there's a lot of concepts in, in 5G to be able to allow you to get to these facilities and, and use, you know, 5G wireless inside the facilities. There's concepts on edge computing that allows these containers to go there and the models to be managed. Um, there's a lot of concepts in data science um, that you may or may not know about that 
help with performance and bias and accuracy and all those things that you wonder about when you ship a model out and are, of course, big topics today. Those, those all exist, right? Those are all there. So you can build almost a complete system here that takes advantage of edge using data science, solving industry problems, reducing costs, saving time, upping customer satisfaction. And uh, for the most part, uh, that's, that's, that's my talk. So um, before um, I, ask, I, I turn it over for questions, I just wanna say, I hope you enjoy your day. I hope you learn a lot today and um, look forward to any discussions we may have in the future, reach out anytime. Uh, so we will now turn it over to, for, for questions. So thank you.